Hi, we're here today in the Harriet Beecher Stowe House. This is actually our bookstore room, but I want to talk a little bit about the influence that Harriet had through writing her book, Uncle Tom's Cabin. So here in Cincinnati now, Harriet has become someone who mixes and mingles with all of these different people and get, gathers a lot of different stories. She's also become an abolitionist based on those Lane Seminary debates. She's become a published author. She's become a mother who loses a child in tragedy. She's also become a friend of the Underground Railroad and a researcher. So now the time is 1850 and a couple of things happen in Harriet's life. One, her husband gets a new job and the Stowe family moves to Maine. But the other event affects the entire country and that is there's a new law passed called the Fugitive Slave Act. And the Fugitive Slave Act makes it much more difficult for freedom seekers to get away. It means that everyone in the North is basically deputized to have to force freedom seekers back to their plantations on the South. It also means that if you're caught helping someone, you get fined and you go to jail. Well, this new law is just gonna make Harriet mad. She says, ooh, I've gotta do something about this. Well, it's 1850 and she's a woman. What is she gonna do, really? So her sister-in-law writes her a letter and says, you know what, Harriet, if I could write like you do, I would write and tell people how bad slavery really is. She's like, that's a great idea. That's what I'm gonna do. And so she has a vision of what happens to Uncle Tom at the end of the book while she's at church. Remember, it's a very religious family. And so she equates the idea of slavery with sin, whereas not all religious people did at that point. But she does, and she makes a point of writing the character of Uncle Tom as a virtuous person and as someone who is making self-sacrifices for others. So she writes down her original, original vision, she takes it home, she keeps writing, her kids, the oldest ones are teenagers by now, start encouraging her, and then she writes a letter to the editor of an abolitionist newspaper she's published in before. And she says, I've got a new story for you, it's gonna be in about four parts, will you publish it? Because now is the time when even a woman or child who can speak a word for freedom and humanity is bound to speak. The editor says, sure, I'll publish it. But it ends up being in 40 parts and published a chapter a week for almost a year. After it gets published in that form, then it's bound in book form and it becomes an immediate bestseller. But by, by being published in a serialized version, it just means that people are getting excited about this story and really getting involved in the characters. I tell my students that come through that it's like the way we used to watch TV shows, but now you can read the book or binge watch it all at the same time. And so that's how Harriet was able to change public opinion about this huge issue of slavery. Before Uncle Tom's Cabin, people in the North were like, yeah, that slavery thing, it happens in the South, but it doesn't affect me, so why should I worry about it? After Uncle Tom's Cabin, people were like, ooh, that slavery thing is really bad. I, I don't want this to keep going on. And so that's the way that Harriet changed public opinion in the 1850s.